مرحبا معكم مهندسة تمارا من شركة اي سي سي واليوم بدنا نشرح برضه تكملة فيديو عن Pipeline and Subjectional Diagrams آخر ما شرحنا عن Pipeline and Subjectional Diagrams وحكينا examples عنهم هلا examples بدو حكينا إحنا إنه إحنا المايكروسوفت فيزيو هو البروجرام اللي نستعمله تا إحنا نرسم ال Pipeline and Subjectional Diagrams بالفيديو اللي قبله رسمنا ال Compressors وهلا بدنا نرسم ال Heat Exchanger أول شيء رح نفتح نسوي إحنا نفتح فيزيو. We are going to create a basic diagram. Create. Now the visual will just give you basic diagrams that you use. We need the engineering diagram. So we click engineering. We click process engineering. And we need the heat exchangers. We need the pipeline. We need instruments. If we need anything else, we'll just add more. The first thing we're going to do. Let's just focus on the heat exchanger itself. So we're going to add a pipeline, a major pipeline. And then we're going to add the actual heat exchanger. We're talking about a shell and tube heat exchanger, which is right here. We usually use this one. You can use the other one, it doesn't make a difference. We can zoom it so we can make it a bit bigger. And once you try to move around the heat exchanger, you can see that small green box popping up. So that means it's connected. Let's change the design a bit, the view, so we can clearly see it. Okay. Now I'm gonna copy that and paste it in here. Connect. Connect. Now, if we take a look at it one more time, we need another two pipelines. Those two pipelines are the um, utility pipeline, which is the shell side. So this being the tube side, we're going to copy this one more time. Oh, it's already copied, I think. Paste it. And this would be our utilities, our shell. It's entering from the top of the heat exchanger. And it's going to be leaving from the bottom of the heat exchanger. So this way. This way, perfect. Now, uh, let's say for this case, we have uh, a fluid, a process fluid that's being cooled using cooling water. So we need, we need to add the, the boxes for the cooling water. So we can go to the basic shapes. We can just use a rectangle, which is right here. Or actually, I'll make it a bit simpler. Forget about the rectangle. We can insert a text box directly right here. If you want to add what is going on, what's going inside the, the pipe, we can just say cooling water in. Now, this way, we can double click to fix this part. Uh, we can easily add a line for the box. So we go design. Anywho, you can just add the, the effect for the line so it can have a rectangular shaped line. Now we can copy this and paste it over here. So this would be our cooling water out, which actually becomes not cool water. So, so here, cooling water out. Now this is just a basic uh, heat exchanger. Let's make it a PNID heat exchanger. What do we have? Let's take a look. We need a control loop. What is the control loop that's working on in here? It's a temperature control loop. Of course, the, the heat exchanger, the main variable in here is the temperature. So we need the temperature indicator, a temperature transmitter, a temperature indicator controller, and we need the valve. Why do we need a valve? We'll talk about it next. Now, first, let's add the indicator. So we can go instruments. We can add an indicator right here. Let's connect it to indicator so we can go to pipelines, just the minor pipelines, connect the indicator. Let's zoom to see what's going on. So here is an indicator. Connect it. We can double click on the circle so we can just simply add PI without entering, without entering. oh, sorry, not PI, TI. I'm sure indicator. Next, we are going to need a temperature transmitter and a temperature indicator controller. So let's add that. We have a temperature transmitter. We paste it. Temperature indicator controller. 
right here. So double click on this, T, T. Double click on this, T, I, C. Now, if we take a look at the connections, the connections between the, or actually let's put the valve in first. The valve, okay, we did not add valves, so let's just add that, engineering, process engineering, um, valves and fittings. And we will need for this solution is this one, the type one valve, I think it was. Let's double check. Yep. So we can simply do this, rotate it however we want it. We can add it, no, not bigger. We can add it right here. And it just directly connects. Now the, the connections between the indicators and the, and the transmitters and the controllers and the valves and whatever, they're different. So in here we did the capillary basic connection, but in here we need electric connections. So let's add the electric connections. If we go to Visio, we can go to instruments one more time. We can go all the way down. We can see electric three. Where is it? Electric three. We can add it right here, connect it to the temperature indicator. Let's zoom out. We can connect the temperature transmitter. Now the same signal is going to be, or tap signal is going to be uh, connecting the transmitter to the indicator, to the controller, sorry. So I'm just going to copy paste the same thing. And I'm just going to add it right here. Now, when we're taking a look at the controller to the valve, there is a pneumatic signal, not an electric signal. So we can find the pneumatic signal over here. We can connect it, temperature indicator controller to the valve. That did not connect, let's zoom. And every time you feel like nothing's connecting or something not being zoomed out or zoomed in, like, or you can make the equipment bigger or smaller, you can just simply zoom in. This one also left the connection. Here we go. So why didn't that? Okay. Let's just connect it this way. Make it a little bit easier. Copy. Paste. In here. Also connect it in here, and that will be our cooling water in. Or oh, it should be connected, let's say, from above, not the bottom. Oops. Yeah, better. Okay, so let's talk about why did we uh, why did we connect it? Uh, let's talk about the valve. Let's talk about how this control loop is working actually. So in here we have a temperature control loop. Okay, so the heat exchanger. Let's say we are we we're, we're we're heating. We're sorry, we're cooling a process stream. Now, as soon as the process stream leaves from here, it needs to be a certain temperature that's required. We call that the design temperature. Now, the temperature, indi the temperature indicator will indicate this temperature that's leaving the heat exchanger from the tube side. They will send an electric signal to a temperature transmitter. And this temperature transmitter will also send an electric signal to a temperature indicator controller. Now, the controller will act upon this temperature or at about this indication that, that the controller just got. So if I if the temperature leaving in here is not as cold as I want it to be, what happens? The controller will order this valve to open its it to like increase its opening and let out more cooling water in, therefore increasing the flow rate of the cooling water entering the heat exchanger, the shell side of the heat exchanger. This way, the temperature of the process fluid leaving will be less, which is closer to the desire or the design temperature that I, that's required. But if it's the other way around, if let's say the temperature is, is way too cold than I want it to be, or way too less than the design temperature, the same thing happens. The, the signal will reach its way to the controller and the controller will order the valve to decrease its opening, therefore decreasing the flow rate of the cooling water entering the shell side of the heat exchanger. And therefore the temperature will increase, but it will increase to the temperature that I want it to be, not too high, not too low. This is how the temperature control loop works in a heat exchanger. Next, I think we are going to be, we've already discussed the compressor, we've already done the compressor and we've already done the heat exchanger. 
Next, we are going to talk about the reactor with the cooling jacket. Thank you very much.